In the book Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut, there are alien creatures who do not see the universe the way humans see it. To them, the stars do not look like a lot of bright little dots, but rather, the creatures can see where each star has been and where it is going, so that the heavens are filled with rarefied, luminous spaghetti. So if we see the stars moving around in a plane, we would see them in one location at a certain point of time and then at a different location a moment later. The alien creatures would instead see all the positions all of the time. It would be as if all the frames of this stop motion were stacked one on top of the other. We're going to explore this visualization by 3D printing some animations. For example, we'll take this animation and print it to form this 3D shape. But there are a couple of simple concepts that we need to keep in mind when 3D printing these shapes. First, the speed. If our object is stopped, it will form a vertical pillar. Kind of boring, but easy to print, no problem. If the object is moving at a moderate speed, part of it will overlap with the previous layer and it will be supported. But if it is moving too fast, it will be unsupported and fall down. Now, we could print support structures to make it work, but let's keep things simple and avoid dealing with supports. We also need to consider the size or diameter of our object. If our object is too small, it will form a thin tube. This will get very weak and flexible as it gets longer. This can be a big problem. The larger the diameter of the object, the stronger and more rigid it will be, making it easier to print without failure. It's important to envision how the entire print will fit together. In this example, the stacks of bricks are all connected to this green plate. If they weren't connected, they would all separate into different pieces when taken off the build plate. So let's keep that in mind. Now let's make an animation. There's a million ways to do it and a million things to animate, but we're gonna use processing to do a simple particle simulation. Now to save time, we're gonna use a pre-made example from The Nature of Code by Daniel Schiffman. And the book and the examples are both free. You can find them in the description below. And this is what the program looks like. First, we're going to change the size to make it larger. We'll make the background black, and we're going to change the particles from triangles to solid white circles. Let's make the particles much larger, and now we'll reduce the number of particles from 200 to 50, and at the same time, reduce the max speed to slow them down. Now we'll alter the forces governing the particles to get different particle behavior. We'll also increase the desired separation distance between particles. This will make them less likely to clump together. Now, if you look closely, you'll see that as the particles exit the screen on one side, they wrap around on the other. For 3D printing, this is a huge problem. Here's why. Imagine this red and blue box is our print area. If a particle exits on the left and re-enters on the right, it is no longer supported by its previous position. Remember, we want to avoid dealing with extra support structures. So we'll change the boundary conditions so that when a particle approaches the edge, it is reflected backwards towards the center. Now let's reduce the desired separation a little bit so we get a little clumping of the particles. And lastly, we write a line of code that saves the frames of the animation as a series of images. Okay, so now we're almost ready to print. We're going to use an Ember 3D printer because if you'll notice, this is the Ember YouTube channel I work for Ember, and that's why we're going to use an Ember 3D printer. But really, it, you can use this for virtually any other kind of 3D printer. It doesn't matter if it's a different kind of stereo lithography printer or an extrusion-based FDM printer. They'll all work the same. It's all the same principle. Okay, so the last parameter we need to consider is the layer height. If the layer height is short, that means our whole object will be shorter. And if the layer height is taller, it'll effectively stretch out our object that we're printing. For this example, we'll use 100 micron layers. In the case of Ember, there's a printer settings text files that we'll enter that into, and that file accompanies the frames of the animation. I should mention that Ember printer files are open source. It's just a text file with instructions and a stack of PNGs packaged as a zip archive. That's what allows us to avoid having to make an STL file. For more details on how to do this with Ember specifically, check out the Instructable linked in the description. We've sent the frames and printer settings to the printer, and after a simple calibration procedure, we can watch it print. 
There is photocurable resin in the tray that is cured by blue light coming from below. A projector shines the light only in the white areas from our animation. You'll notice the resin tray is moving back and forth. This motion slides the print off the bottom of the tray. This requires much less force than directly pulling upward. 500 layers and about an hour later, we've got our print. So how did we do? Our goal was to create rarefied, luminous spaghetti. Rarefied means not dense, and these are kind of dense with particles, but okay. And luminous means emitting light, kind of like this thing here. And we printed in black resin, which is kind of the exact opposite of luminous. Does it look like spaghetti? Sort of. But don't eat this, this is definitely not edible. Wait a minute. What if instead of printing in black resin, you print in clear resin and then shine UV light on it? There we go. That looks like luminous spaghetti. So it turns out a number of people are into 3D printing animations, including Eric Haynes and Andrew Glasner. They wrote an open source processing sketch that creates cool geometric looping patterns that are designed to be 3D printed. I even printed a few of their designs. So check the description if you want to learn more about that. So that's the process of 3D printing animations. If you want to see me print more animations, let me know. And the best way to tell me that you want to see more is to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for your time. Have a beautiful day.